All right, now I have picked Alex Pajeda to knock out Khalil Roundtree Jr. within the first two rounds of their fight this Saturday in the main event at UFC 307. Now, I understand this is not a hot take. Most people have picked this exact thing to happen, but what I want to do in this video is go into a little bit more detail as to why. I've picked out some footage from Khalil Roundtree Jr.'s fights that I believe act as evidence to show that Alex Pajeda's weapons will work against him come Saturday night. Now, I wanted to put this video out earlier in the week, so I apologize for that. I have been sick. I understand my voice is a little raspy, a little bit like Miley Cyrus or whatever, okay? And yes, I'm wearing sunglasses inside. I'm not looking all that great. Let's just get through it, dude. I picked out two fights in particular. Dustin Jacoby, Anthony Smith. In the Jacoby fight, I thought Khalil lost, okay? But that's not the point. The point is he was very defensive and also very reactionary, having to constantly react to what Jacoby was doing. Whereas in the Anthony Smith fight, he was kind of the hammer more than he was the nail. We get to take a look at how he responds in both of those situations and how he reacts to certain shots and things like that. So let us get started right away with the first one, which is the Jacoby fight. I've got it paused at 456. Not because anything happens here, but what I want to point out is a few things about Khalil's stance. So Khalil Roundtree Jr. comes out most of his fights exactly like this. Okay, he's very heavy on that lead leg, very heavy, completely flat footed. Uh, rear legs picked up off the mat. You can see the shadow. So he will be susceptible to leg kicks early on. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this right here, his guard, okay? Very high, but also very forward. It's almost a 90 degree angle right here. His elbows are completely outward, okay? You look at Dustin Jacoby standing across from him. You've got the hand up by the chin, but the elbow tucked down low, just in case of a body shot, right? Now, the reason I think this could be an issue for Khalil Roundtree Jr. is because Alex Pajeda will be standing in the exact same stance that Dustin Jacoby is right now. And we know that he likes to use that rear leg to blast kicks to the body. And this is a lot of real estate for those Alex Pajeda body kicks. If Khalil comes out looking like this, I would imagine within the first like 15, 20 seconds, we hear one of those loud thudding, slapping body kicks from Alex Pajeda, which he then goes on to use to set up stuff like he did against Yuri Prohaska, set up head kicks and, and things like that. So just, uh, just a couple things I noticed. But I will also say, after about four or five minutes, this stance goes away. Khalil Roundtree Jr. does seem to have a bit of a gas tank issue, which I will show you guys later on. I'm going to let it play just for a second so we can skip ahead to 440 on the clock. Okay, so here we are. Now, I left this in here because this is something I think Khalil's going to try against Alex Pajeda. So I'm going to let it go here. We have Jacoby throw a little switch kick. To the outside leg, you can see that Khalil is loading up off his rear leg. He is going to explode forward with a blitz to counter that leg kick. He whips a right hand out there that gets blocked. He throws a left hand that partially lands, but for the most part misses. And then he follows it up with another right hook. Now, I believe he's going to try this against Alex Pajeda. I think he's going to try and blitz his leg kicks, although I only think we'll see it once or twice. And I think it will be both early on in the fight. I think Khalil Roundtree Jr. is going into this fight thinking, I need to get this guy out of here as quickly as I possibly can because the longer I'm in here with him, the more danger I'm in, the more time he has to hit me with something that will most likely put me out. So I think we see, we see a lot of big actions, a lot of explosiveness from Khalil early on in this fight. Now, the problem with that is, with this you know uh, method of countering Alex Pajeda's leg kicks is, one, they're a lot trickier to time than Dustin Jacoby. Alex Pajeda has some of the best timing on his leg kicks ever. They're very sneaky. There's very little tell on them, unlike a Dustin Jacoby, okay? Not to mention the trade-off is a lot different, dude. You can eat a Dustin Jacoby leg kick. You can afford that to try and land three shots of your own. That trade-off with Alex Pajeda is a little bit different because it only takes one or two leg kicks before you start to see the effects. We've seen that in almost every single fight that he's had where he lands a few kicks, all of a sudden that opponent has to change the way they stand, whether they switch stances, they take weight off that leg or whatever it is, they take effect very quickly. So I think we'll see this maybe once or twice out of Khalil, but if it doesn't work, I would imagine he abandons it entirely. Just left it in here as something that I thought we might see out of Khalil. Now I'm going to uh, let it play for a few seconds so we can skip ahead to the three minute mark. It's easier to skip ahead in intervals of uh, 10 and 5 rather than try to find it on the bar. So here we go. Now, this is the most relevant piece of footage, in my opinion, from this fight. I would imagine most of you are going to pick up on it relatively quickly. We all know what Alex Pajeda's favorite weapon is. Just keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, Dustin Jacoby has not been going to the body with a jab 
for the majority of this fight. I don't think he's thrown a single one. He was peppering him up top with the jabs, landing kicks and things like that, but the body jab was not a weapon he was using in this fight. So here we have Dustin switch from Southpaw to Orthodox, and he drops his level a little bit, right? Now you can see his eyes are downwards that way. It's obviously blurry. We can't actually see his eyes, but he tilted his head forward, and it looks as though, based on the direction of his head, he's looking down to the core, right? Trying to sell this shot. Drops his hands, and Cleo Roundtree Jr. bites hook, line, and sinker, okay? Now, I'm going to let it play for a split. Here we go. Much like the Jamal Hill fight with Alex Pajeda, obviously, right? Where he's dropping that lead hand to, to address the body jab. He did it almost every single time. Few differences here. Khalil's hand comes more straight out than Jamal's does. Jamal's drops almost all the way down like he's trying to swat it away. Khalil's kind of like brace off. Also, his chin is tucked and hidden behind his shoulder. So, the most vulnerable part of his face is kind of protected here. And that's okay when you're fighting a guy like Dustin Jacoby. The only problem is, is an Alex Pajeda left hook off your temple will probably fuck you up all the same, okay? But that was very easy for Jacoby to sell that shot. All he had to do was dip his level a little bit, look down, and then he came over the top with the left hook. And like I said earlier, before I played this clip for you, he was not going to the body the way that we see Alex Pajeda do. Alex Pajeda makes that a primary focus. He utilizes the body jab in every single one of his fights because it's a way to not only like move forward and push you back a little bit and just be landing something, just being active. It's also used to set up that left hook because as soon as you bite on it, he's coming up over the top with the left hand. And that's exactly what we just saw Jacoby do, but with very little setup. So if Jacoby can set that up just with a look and a bit of a drop, I believe Alex Peta can set it up as well and fairly easily. And we see a few more instances of that throughout this fight. Now, I'm going to skip ahead to uh, 244 will work. This is wild to me, dude. Like, there are so many opportunities for Alex Pajeda to crack Khalil, whether it's offensively, whether Alex Pajeda leads, or whether he waits for a counter. If I, I think that if Alex Pajeda gets Khalil with a left hook, it probably will be off a counter. Because like I said, I think early on we're going to see a lot of big movements out of Khalil, knowing I need to get this guy the fuck out of there. Do you know what I mean? But here we have a prime example of when that could happen, okay? Look at how crazy this is, okay? Now, Khalil's about to load up for a right hook, which I don't even know if you could call it a hook. Drops his hands a bit here. They're hand fighting. You can see him getting ready to, to, he's loading up, right? He's getting ready to explode. His hand goes all the way back there, bro. He's wiping his own ass is what it looks like, right? Like he could have thrown the hook from where his hand was initially, but he goes all the way back to his ass. And then Jacoby, rightly, cracks him with a straight shot and then ducks because he knows that was coming and he could see it from like a mile away. Now, there's something else I want to point out in this exchange here. So I'm going to let it play back. Okay. Jacob, they're hand fighting. They're hand fighting. Now, Jacoby is in southpaw, so this might not be as relevant. But regardless, uh, here we have Khalil trying to wipe his own ass with his right hook. Like, what are we doing here? Right. And Jacoby cracks him in the face with the straight left. Because we know 99% of the times, a straight shot will beat a looping shot. And he also knows that that's coming because he saw him take his own hand to his ass. Ducks out of the way. But right here, Khalil's technique, in my opinion, gets glazed way too much. Especially if we're talking about the hands, okay? So often, Khalil throws himself out of position or becomes off balance when he throws almost anything. And almost any time he throws that big right hand which is supposed to be like a right hook of sorts, he almost completely straightens it out as if he's like swinging a baseball bat. Do you know what I mean? Which if it lands could be devastating, but if you're a striker like Jacoby or Alex Pajeda or whoever, you're going to see it coming from a mile away and you're not going to be there. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if he was to throw a nice, tight, clean, crisp left hook, he might land some of these, right? Not just that though. Look at this. Right? This is what I mean by out of position. Okay, If you are shadow boxing and every time you throw a left hook or a right hook or whatever, you're out of position, you have to reset, Like you're probably doing something incorrect. Okay, Khalil has given up his back here. Now, it's not necessarily that big of a deal because he's fighting Dustin Jacoby, who's a glory kickboxer, but look how easy it would be for Jacoby. His right leg is here to get a hook in and swing around the back. And we see this out of Khalil multiple times throughout this fight. Like 
constantly we see this okay it's a, it's a it's an issue in my opinion but we are now going to uh i'm going to let it play for a few more seconds we have khalil lunge in with a big lead elbow off of jacoby straight but i just want to get to the the 37 mark so it's easier to skip ahead there we go now here we are 157 another example of a time where <laughs> jacoby had him dead to rights here okay if this was somebody else i feel like we would have seen a nasty counter so Khalil's about to lunge in with a left hand. Now, right where his left hand is here, you could throw a straight left from there, right? That's kind of what you're supposed to do. Khalil never does that. He always has to cock it back, as you will see right here. So Jacoby throws a jab. Khalil intercepts it with his lead hand. And then you see him cock back that left hand. Jacoby saw it coming from like a mile away, dude. He was nowhere near. But what I want to do is pause it in the moment where Jacoby could have seriously made him pay. Jacoby likes to kind of get out and, you know, jump out, jump back in and things like that. But if he was more willing to stand in their encounter, I mean, there was a few opportunities throughout the course of this fight. So here we have Jacoby, they're hand fighting, the jabs intercepted, the big left hand, right? Look at that, dude. I mean, dead to rights. Your face is right out there. There is nothing protecting you. You could get cracked with a right hand counter. And if Jacoby had stepped out to the left rather than going straight back, the left hook counter is there because your hand is all the way down at your knee. Like, Khalil Roundtree Jr. is not very defensively responsible at all. And like I said, if Jacoby wasn't as much of like a stick and move guy, hop in and out of range guy, he could have sat down on a right hand there. I don't know if he's long enough, if his reach would have gotten him, but there will be somebody that can, okay? So... You know, we're going to skip ahead now to 310 on the clock in round number two. Uh, we'll go to 314 just so we can watch what I want to see in its entirety. Now, what I want to point out immediately, this is a very sloppy exchange here, okay? So like I said, it seems like Khalil has a bit of a gas tank issue. Winging shots, bro. Look how straight his arm is. I don't know what he's doing, but either way. I think the reason his technique gets glazed the way that it does is because if we're watching him against like a can with all due respect to Dawkus, okay? And his shots are landing. There's something there to stop it. Khalil Roundtree kind of fights like he's, he kind of fights like he's hitting a heavy bag is what I've noticed. I don't think he's setting up traps. I don't think he's being overly sophisticated. I think he's just trying to make that whap sound as, as loud as he possibly can. And like I said, if he's landing on his opponents, then it looks really good because there's something there to stop it. But if Khalil Roundtree was to shadow box the way that he fights, he would be falling over himself every single fucking time, okay? And it's, an, it's a good example of that right there. Like, he's got a reset. He gave up his back yet again. Now, Jacoby wasn't there. What I want to point out to you, though, like I said in the opening, Khalil's stance of that high, uh, you know, real high forward guard, gone. Nowhere to be seen. Also, he looks like he's a little heavier on the, the, the rear leg now that we're later in the fight. But... Like I said, I think he's got a bit of a gas tank issue. The hands basically stay here for the rest of the fight. Now, he does bring them up to try to block stuff when he sees things coming. But it's just to show that the body language here is not the same that we saw at the beginning of this video. Okay? Not even remotely. Um, now, I also want to point out this right here. Jacoby is in southpaw, so it's not necessarily as relevant. But we've got Jacoby throws a, a left hand there but okay Khalil shells up with a very high guard again a lot of real estate for body shots we've seen Alex Pajeda do this against opponents now he did it against Israel Adesanya and got slept for it right so this could be a way Khalil baits in Alex Pajeda right very high guard let him come in and rip the body because you've got to get him relatively close and then I can swing one of these baseball bats do you know what I mean Jacoby plays this in my opinion quite intelligently and just splits the guard once twice and almost thrice, okay? Now, he's at a safe distance, right? But I could see Alex Pajeda whipping a body kick from there. Uh, I could see him coming in, though, trying to dig to the body and potentially getting caught. So I do think this is something that Khalil might try to do to bait him. But it just goes to show, even with his really high up guard, he's still not being defensively responsible. Jacoby's just able to stick his glove pass there three times in a row. Okay, we're going to skip ahead just five seconds. Now, it's another example of Khalil leaving himself completely and totally vulnerable, not battle-ready whatsoever, and just prime to be countered or something like that, okay? So, we've got Jacoby here sticking him with his jab, which he struggled with throughout the majority of this fight, okay? Now, Khalil, Jun uh, Khalil Roundtree Jr. off of a, okay, 
uh, Jacoby, pardon me, leads with the left hand, and Khalil goes to counter. Yet again, trying to wipe his own ass, completely straightens his arm. Jacoby sees it coming from a mile away, and look how off balance Khalil gets in this moment. I mean, he almost tripped over his own two feet there. And right, Jacoby shows us yet again, he's the kind of guy that likes to get out of range and then come back in and whatever. If you're somebody more willing to stand in the pocket and try to counter, which we've seen Alex Pajeda do against certain opponents, I mean, you are like, I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. There's so many opportunities for him to get cracked with something. I don't understand why. I feel like Joe Rogan has had this effect where we all think Khalil Roundtree Jr. has like the best technique of all time. He's Bangkok ready and all the fucking rest of it. Meanwhile, he's throwing shit like that every time. Right? Like I showed you that in the first round when he shouldn't be tired and it only gets worse throughout the fight. So that's like the default is to throw big winging shots where my arm is completely straight. And then as the fight goes on, they just become more and more telegraphed because he has to load up more. Now I've left this bit in here because I think it could potentially be relevant. If what we talked about at the beginning where Alex Pajeda utilizes the body kick from that with that rear leg, uh, if he wants to set up a head kick later on in the fight. Now we've got Jacoby. Okay, Jacoby sometimes likes to walk into range. Well, actually, that's later on, but well, I'll show you this right now. So at this point in the fight, both guys are pretty tired, right? Jacoby's body language is not what it once was. Cleo Roundtree, clearly not. Hands are down by his side completely. The reason why I find this to be relevant is because this is a very lazy setup. Uh, very labored, I guess, is, is a better word. From Jacoby here that I just kept imagining. If that was Alex Pajeda, I mean, Jesus Christ, Okay. So we've got Jacoby here. Now take a look at Khalil, okay? Right hand down by his side. Lead hand, you can just see it poking out right here, all right? About at chest level. Now Jacoby goes to set up, throws out a right hand. Khalil has yet to react. Throws out the right hand even more. Khalil has still yet to react. Now that the leg is almost halfway there, we see Khalil start to pick up that rear hand and he just barely gets it there dude like if jacoby was a few inches closer to him and this landed more with the shin than it did with the feet like the toes that could have been it for khalil like he didn't even bother to move until he was like oh shit the head kick's coming and like i said that was a very labored movement from jacoby very lazy right hand he threw out there to try to set that up and the toes do land you know and then we see this body language from Khalil, which is just not what it was. And like, we're only in the second round. Dude, this is a five round fight, which, you know, I don't think it's going to go that long, but your cardio is lacking, my boy. Okay. And then we see here another very relevant piece of footage, in my opinion. And we saw Anthony Smith actually pick up on this as well. And if a guy like Anthony Smith is picking up on this, Alex Payne is picking up on it. And the danger from Alex Payne to picking up on it is much worse than Anthony Smith. Okay. Now we've got Jacoby. This is something relevant as well. Jacoby's stepping in, lifting up his leg. We see Sean Strickland do this sometimes just to avoid leg kicks, right? But what I want to point out to you is how Cleo Roundtree Jr. responds to it because this could be viewed as he's going to teep you to the body or front kick you to the body. Now, Cleo ducks down completely, crouches. You saw his legs go like that. Drops the lead hand to block the body kick. My guy, like this is something Alex Pajeda would love to see. Right. If he hits you with a few body kicks, like I spoke about earlier, this is exactly how he wants to see you respond to these body kicks. But that's not what I'm talking about now. Khalil goes to counter or attack at the very least what he perceives to be a counter because Jacoby's coming in. He ducks under that shot. The uppercut's blocked, I believe. It's hard to tell. And then whap. Khalil's hands leave his face. And we saw this when Jacoby fainted to the body. His hands come out straight to like brace off. We saw this with the, the leg lift as if he was going to front kick him to the body. The hands come down. Khalil has this habit of putting his hands out in front of him. And Jacoby comes over the top of the left hook counter. And like I said, dude, if that's Alex Pajeda, Jesus Christ, my guy, you're probably done for right there. And then again, just to point out the body language, he's exhausted. We're only two rounds into the fight. Could be a serious issue for him moving forward. Now we are going to go take a look at the Anthony Smith fight. All right, now here we are at the Anthony Smith fight. Okay, we're at 258 in the first round. Now, this is Khalil's most recent victory. It's like, you know, people are glazing him for it because of the way that he finished Anthony Smith in the big, you know, Thor's hammer after the fact. But 
you know, this is not the Anthony Smith from a few years ago, obviously, which is why I picked this one, because this is where we get to see Khalil basically at his best against an opponent who almost had nothing for him at the very least after the first round. And we can still see the holes in his technique. He basically does things the same way against an Anthony Smith that he is beating the shit out of as he does against a Dustin Jacoby that was giving him some serious issues. So here we are. I want to show you still, like I said, okay, we're only two minutes into this fight. You should not be tired. Your technique should not be suffering at this point in time. But here we see Khalil wing with the right hand and even Anthony Smith gets out of the way of that. But then we have Khalil once again. You can see his shoulders, man. You could throw the left hand from there, but he chooses to swing it back and cock it, right? Now, Anthony Smith just shells up, okay? Which is fine. Not really. But imagine what Alex Pajeda does in this instant. Your right hand is down by your fucking belly button and out. It's going to take a second to get it back there. And we know that we've got a second before that, that uh, left hand lands because you've lunged so far back. Right, like I said in the Jacoby fight, this isn't uh, this is a default for Khalil Roundtree Jr. There's really nothing that he does with the hands that is actually technically sound. Everything is big winging shots that an experienced, educated striker will be able to get away, get out of the way of, or counter. I mean, he could get cracked with the right hand here if Smith was not shelling up. He could get countered with the left hook here if Smith was not shelling up. But regardless, it lands, you know. But like I said, this is Anthony Smith. Not Khalil or uh, not Alex Pajeda, which, you know, it's it's going to cause issues for him, in my opinion, if he responds in these ways. Now, here we have something else that I spoke about in the Jacoby fight. So I brought up the body kicks a little bit because Khalil, oh, we can already see his hands have dropped. We're two and a half minutes into the fight. This guy has no gas tank. His hands start up here. Lots of real estate for body kicks. Um, and I said that Alex Pajeda could utilize that to set up a head kick later on in the fight. We see Anthony Smith use the body kick and then show us exactly what we would need to see to believe that Alex Pajeda could land a head kick at some point in their fight. So a little bit of hand fighting going on, which by the way, Alex Pajeda likes to do as well. And he's much better at it or much more educated with it than guys like Smith. So that could, you know, even just something like this could cause issues for Khalil if he gets baited into a hand fighting contest with Alex Pajeda. We saw this happen a little bit with Jamal Hill, but here we have Anthony Smith land a body kick okay bit of a teep now khalil drops down tries to block it it definitely lands it's a good body kick he dug it in there pretty good we see him squat like we did when jacoby was stepping in with the lead leg lifted and what i want to take a look at is not necessarily that body kick okay but i want to take a look at the way he will address it later on now my keyboard has been messing around and it is doing it yet again so i can't skip ahead five seconds for some reason we got to just do this we'll get through it dude we're almost done okay it works for the while i'm filming this video it works for the first half of it and then it just stops working now anthony smith throws a leg kick that gets checked brutally that's not what we're here to take a look at though he goes to jab two and then goes to throw another body kick. And look how Khalil reacts to it. Squats down, curls up, made himself about three inches shorter. Lead hand all the way down. And his even his rear hand is tucked in trying to defend his body. Like I said, this is exactly what Alex Pajeda wants to see. And if Alex Pajeda lands a body kick, and then we get this out of Khalil, either when he throws another one, or he just faints with the hip, I feel like we could see a similar situation to what we saw against Yuri Prohaska, okay? And like, you know, it's just, and then he lunges forward with the left hand again. That misses. Now I want to skip ahead to, we're not going to be able to because this ugh, keyboard is being janky. We're just going to go to 155 on the clock. I mean, Smith is already busted up at this point, right? And we still see a lack of technique from Khalil Roundtree Jr. I apologize for this. I don't know why my keyboard is doing that, but regardless, I want to show that even Anthony Smith can pick up on the left hooks the way that Dustin Jacoby did and the way that Alex Pajeda will certainly be able to do because Khalil Roundtree Jr. is almost always open for that left hook, as you can see right now. So they're hand fighting. Khalil goes to lunge forward and Anthony Smith swings and a miss here. Okay, swings and a miss here. Khalil lunges forward. And then we get back to it.
and we see it one more time. Khalil finally throws a straight shot. Finally, okay? And not one, not meaning the arm is straight, but I mean in trajectory. Smith slips and lands the left hook that time. Now, it doesn't land cleanly, right? It bounces off the shoulder and whatever, but just to show, right? Anthony Smith's picking up on this. We're not even out of the first round. Dustin Jacoby picked up on this pretty quick as well. Khalil Roundtree Jr. is exposed to that left hook basically always, okay? Basically always. Now, I left this bit in here because this is something else that I think uh, Khalil Roundtree Jr. might try to use against Alex Pajeda. So, we saw Israel Adesanya have success with this, although they are not the same uh, level of striker by any means. But here we have Khalil dig a kick to the body. Now, later on, he lands another body kick as well that I will show you guys in just a little bit here. But um, Alex Pajeda oftentimes is open for body kicks, right? We saw Izzy blast in them when he was in the southpaw position. Khalil fights out a southpaw. He could try to utilize them. Now, they're not as sneaky as Adesanya's. The angles are a little bit different. Um, but it is something that he could try to use. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the next body kick, which is in about four seconds from this time. And this is a big one. This is what I would expect him to try, by the way, because he does kind of angle it the way that Adesanya does, but it's just not as sneaky. They show you a good angle of it on the replay, but we'll see if we can tell here. Big body kick that if... It, so it's, it's a little tricky to see because it's blurry, but you can see that the heel is mostly down, right? Meaning he didn't turn it over all the way. It's not coming from around. It's coming from kind of like up at a diagonal trajectory. And that's what Izzy oftentimes had success with when he would kick Alex Pajeda to the body because he's able to tuck it in under the elbow. Alex Pajeda holds his hands kind of low, right? His elbow is usually there, but he is open for body kicks. And we've seen them actually take uh, effect on him, although... That was at middleweight, so I don't know that it'll have the same effect at light heavyweight where he's not cutting as much weight. But I could see him, like I said, early on in the fight, big movements, explosive movements, trying to land something like that early on, okay? And now in a few seconds, I mean, he just threw himself completely out of position there with that left hand, but either way, he's got a basically defeated Smith in front of him, so it's not, not much of an issue. But we then have here another example of him throwing himself completely and totally out of position okay throws a jab as anthony smith throws a right which is something we don't see a lot of from khalil and then he went bro i mean <laughs> anthony smith has him dead to rights here dead to rights this is a right hand across your fucking chin if that's alex Pajeda, and your neck is getting snapped around his mouth is not closed this would be a ko shot this would be a KO shot. And like I showed you in the Jacoby fight, we see this quite frequently. Now, Smith tries to do it, but I feel like at this point in Smith's career, the brain ain't acting, or the brain is not like in unison, right? It's not, we're, we're not, there's the harmony's gone where the brain says something and your body reacts. It's more so like the brain says something and the body reacts, right? If this was a younger Smith, maybe he lands that right hand. If this was an Alex Pajeda, he definitely lands that right hand. Do you know what I mean? That's not ta that's not taking him a second to process. He'll see that immediately. One of the most you know open uh, dead to right shots we've seen in this entire video. Now I apologize. This video is a little bit longer, and I would I you know I imagine some of the stuff might have been repetitive, but I just wanted to show you guys make a point how often it occurs. It's not like Khalil makes a mistake once or twice throughout a fight. It is literally every single time he throws shots essentially at the very least with the hands right like the kicks are fine although if he was to miss those i would imagine he'd be out of position just as much but you know he could he has the ability to throw tight nice clean left hooks i would imagine his muay thai coach has tried to teach him to do so but instead he straightens his arm all the way and throws it like a baseball bat we've seen it throws himself out of position constantly i want to watch this back one more time i'm sorry dude we're gonna listen dude screw it okay it went back 10 seconds because my computer hates me or my keyboard hates me at least so that's that big body kick which i really like to see okay and then we followed it up with the right hook there but what i want to see is this okay now we see a very rare occurrence out of khalil the jab which even by the way he cocks back he cocks it back he doesn't even just stick it out there cocks it back before he throws it he gives his opponents a lot of time to get out of the way of stuff we see smith throw a right hand at the same time 
and then Khalil wings a massive shot and is, you know, against a large portion of strikers in the light heavyweight division, you're done. You're done. It's just that Smith's older and not what he once was, and the brain is probably not reacting with the body the way that we see out of younger guys or guys that are younger in their career. You are completely dead to right. Smith even has that right hand ready. He just can't get it off quick enough. Either way, dude, like I said, a little bit longer of a video. I apologize for that. A little bit repetitive, but like I said, I just wanted to prove a point that this is not a rare occurrence. This is something that happens constantly, whether it's in the first round early or if it's in the third round, second round, wherever it is. Khalil's constantly throwing himself out of position, open for counters all day, open for body kicks, the way that he then addresses like everything about this fight, everything about watching Khalil Roundtree Jr. fights back tells me what I already thought, right? Alex Pajeda will sleep him, okay? And my official prediction is, you know, a left hook is most likely, the most likely option. I would imagine 75% it will be a left hook KO, whether it be a counter or Alex Pajeda gets him to bite on the body the way that Jacoby did. Or, and I know this is going to seem like I'm just saying obvious shit, but or the head kick that we we saw against Yuri Prohaska because we saw how Khalil's open to the body. We saw how he reacts to body kicks and Alex Pajeda is going to use that, right? So if Khalil comes out a little more light-footed on the lead leg as opposed to how we saw in these fights, well, maybe Alex starts going to the body more than he goes to the leg and then maybe he does that instead. Do you know what I mean? Never know. But I would say 75% left hook, 25% kick to the head or a knee. Anyways, dude, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.